Hello everybody, it's Kevin here again and this week we're going to be going over how to integrate a database with our APIs. So of course you all probably know why this is important, but if you don't, I'm going to reiterate and explain once again that if we're able to separate the data access from the client side, we're able to prevent users from accessing sensitive data that might be able to put our database in jeopardy. So a database typically has a connection string and if a user gets access to that connection string, that's going to be bad news because then they might be able to do some bad things with that. So I'm just going to show this example. Uh, not this one, this one here. If I go through some of my debugging software and I place this executable in here and I do a complete search for string references, we're able to see that there's a couple strings in here that we might not want this users to see so whatever you assign to a string if you assign a value to a string the user might be able to debug that uh, executable if it's an executable for example or uh, just about any program type even the Python scripts uh, that's another example that you can do something like this with if you're able to get that back down to assembly language you can read through these instructions and find some string references that you might not want that user to have access to so by by having the user connect to an API, we're able to get rid of that uh, worry. So if I X out of this, I'm going to go ahead and create a new Visual Studio project. So open up Visual Studio 2022, create a new project, make sure it's an ASP.NET Core project. I'm just going to call this uh, DB Connect lecture. All this stuff can remain the same. And I have list I have a uh, written a list of instructions that should help with uh, doing this stuff step by step. But first, you're going to want to install EF Power Core. Not EF. I'm sorry, EF Core Power Tools. So we're going to go to the extension manager. and you would install it through here. I, however, already have it installed. If I can find it here. Right here through installed. EF Core Power Tools. If you don't have it installed, go ahead and install it. So once that is installed, you can restart Visual Studio. Once that is restarted, you can right click on this here, select EF Core or just hover over EF Core Power Tools, click Reverse Engineer, and then Add. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to SQL Server and make sure that you can connect to your SQL Server. So here's a server name, local DB, KYGM. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can either use SQL Server authentication, so you can have your SA, your super user, or system admin, I should say and then the password or you can just use Windows authentication just verify that you can connect to this and that looks good so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna specify that so local DB and I'm just gonna do this on purpose I'm going to use the wrong uh, slash here if we try to look for databases it's just never gonna load the databases so if I do the right one and then I look for a database, it'll pop right up. You can also test your connection here and the test connection succeeded. So for now I'm just going to select Northwind. In your case you would select any database that you're working with. So I'm just going to be using Northwind. I'm going to be using Windows Authentication. I'm going to select OK on here. I'm going to leave this on EF Core 5. Select OK. We're going to import all of our tables and here we're going to name this models. Here we're going to name this data. We're going to pluralize or singleize generated object names and we want to install the EF Core provider package in the product. In the project, not product. So we can just allow that to do its thing. Once that's done, we're going to go to our new get extension manager. Or not extension, our new get package manager. 
And if we look here, we have, we're missing some references, so that's why we're going to have to do this. So I go to Browse. I'm just going to look up Microsoft Entity Framework Core. So we're going to want to install this one. Accept all the license agreements. Then we're going to want to install the SQL Server. That's the SQL Server package. And we're going to want to install Design. The newest version will suffice here. If you're having any issues though, just use this one and uh, should limit the possibility of issues because if it's working here, it should work on yours. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to have some instructions here just so that I don't forget anything. We're going to click on our solution, or not our solution, this here, and verify that we have our package references, which we do. If we didn't have our package references, I'll pull up the link right here. You would just go to the link that is provided in the instructions and paste this into your package reference. So it will be three package references. And I'm going to get all my stuff sorted out over here once again. If you already have your package references though, don't add any more. This will suffice. It may end up causing errors having multiple package references, ambiguous package references. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our program.cs and before our app but after our builder services and actually even before this we're going to want to add our reference here so using Microsoft Entity Framework Core and then we're going to want to add our database context so builder dot services dot add db context and uh, you're going to want to add the context for your database so here's the models that were generated here's our data context so that's what we're going to use make sure that I got this right and I'm sorry I actually meant this here not the context quite yet And then dot data and then we're going to specify the data context after that we're going to add we're going to have a like a, an anonymous function or a lambda expression so options and then our options are going to be use SQL server and we're going to give our uh, configuration here We're going to get our connection string. And in this case, we haven't set up our connection string quite yet, so we have to take care of that first. So for our connection string, we have to get SQL Server tools on this side, which I don't have. I'm going to pull that up real quick, and I will be right back. So you may run into this issue where if you don't have your SQL Server loaded, you have to add that database. So you just select here, log in, connect to it then you expand this select the database that you want to pull from select properties and then you look for your connection string so I gotta find that here it is take this copy it and we're gonna go to our app settings.json then we have to specify our connection strings right here so connection strings and then we're going to just name this one Northwind. In your case, you can name it whatever you want to name it. I would suggest just naming it whatever the database is named. So Northwind. Paste this connection string in. That all looks good. Go back to my program.cs. Then pull that connection string. Save that. That all looks good. Save everything that you have made changes to. Once we have done that, we can select controllers here and right click on it. Select add, add the controller, select API, API controller with actions using Entity Framework. 
and we can select our model class. In this case, I'm just going to select product, database context, or data context, I should say, and then name the controller whatever you'd like to name it. Typically, the table name and then controller is a pretty good naming convention. So just give it time to scaffold and do its operations. So that went perfectly, but sometimes this this may end up happening to you when you're trying to add that controller. You may run into an, you may run into an issue with the uh, uh, that data context, or either that or the connection string. And if you have that issue, just make sure that you have the right connection string here, and make sure that it's defined properly, because it will look in here. This is where it looks. It's going to look into connection strings, and then it's going to look for this key. So if anything in here is wrong then it's going to give you that error. So just make sure that your connection string is good. Also, if you're having issues with that, just log in using SA and uh, use your password because that might help with that issue. So now if I try running this, just give it its time to start up. I'm just going to be using Swagger for our API test. If I do a get, this here route API products we're gonna get all of that data and then this is data that we can use later in our program and not only can we do that we can also post so we can add some stuff to it we can get specific items so say ID number one and here is the test from that last lecture we can also modify and uh, we can delete and I'm not going to delete just because there are foreign key constraints so we don't want to run into that issue right now but this is just the basics so if you have any table any additional table that you'd like to add just once again do the same thing add controller API API controller with the read write actions using entity framework and then just select the appropriate model now sometimes if there's a uh, foreign key constraints you will run into issues so you won't be able to either you'll run into build issues or you'll run into some other strange problems if that does happen just uh, I gotta pull it up here I gotta make sure that I am pulling up the right file So, let's see here. In our data context, we may have a foreign key constraint, so just look up has no key. And that doesn't show up in here, so this probably won't cause any issues, but if you have uh, the has no key, entity dot has no key, just remove that. Remove that line here. This is all looking good. And this is part of that uh, good database design, what I was talking about in the uh, database lecture. Because if you, have, if you have some messed up keys and messed up constraints, that will lead to issues down the road. Also, if you already have your models and you, so let's look at our products model here. If you have your models and you, you try working with them later down the road, you may have to uh, cast some values into these here. So you can create classes or functions that cast whatever you're working with in code to decimals. And uh, I'm trying to think of something else that might cause an issue. But really, decimals are the biggest ones that I've had issues with. So just cast them into that before you add it to the database. And if you're more of a, I just want to know what the command is, and then I can use it anywhere in code type of person, well, then you can just look at uh, exactly how it does it. So it just has this database context. then it it's got its functions, so it's pretty easy. You don't actually have to write the queries, at least not right away. It makes it uh, pretty straightforward for handling all those items. So that's just about it for this. Of course, refer to your instructions, which I have right here. These instructions show you exactly how to do this step by step, and they're pretty useful. 
if you run into any issues, just look through the instructions and the odds are that I probably covered it inside of the instructions. So thanks for watching. Uh, just keep an eye out for any additional content that I might throw out on D2L. Other than that, thanks for watching and uh, y'all take care.